labium, thyroxin, or one of that progression of thyroxin. So it's a fairly common problem, and you can see that after the age of 50, from this graph it's clear that after the age of 50, the incidence of hypothyroidism rapidly rises. Saying that, we are now seeing a lot of young people, you know, even, you know, uh, even at the age of 10, 20, even before 30, who have thyroid problems, especially hypothyroid. So this graph perhaps is, has changed uh, in Kerala. It's probably starting out much earlier and it's, uh, it's rapidly rising. Then the other thyroid problems is what we call a hyperthyroidism. There, there is an overactive thyroid gland. There is too much of uh, thyroid hormone in the system. Uh, and the incidence of that actually takes on, you know, there is no sort of speaking of it, which means it can happen at any age, usually in the 20s, 30s, you know, to 40s, but it doesn't go up, you know, the incidence of it doesn't go up with age. So these are the two common thyroid problems we have. Now, what is interesting is, this is a study that we did in New Delhi in uh, AIMS, uh, in the All the Institute of Medical Science. And what they found was that thyroid problems, if you look at all the thyroid problems together, that is including our abdominal thyroid function, it's actually much more common than diabetes itself. So diabetes is what we say, you know, diabetes is so rapid, everybody has diabetes. But if you look at just abnormal thyroid function and thyroid disorders, it is perhaps even more common. Only thing is, a lot of people with thyroid disorders may not have any major symptoms. So unless you do test, you may not necessarily find it out. So it doesn't become a problem. You know, they don't come to you necessarily unless uh, you do a test. Now this is some data that uh, came out from uh, our institute here. And you can see there that in that, uh, uh, in that uh, table there, 80% have normal thyroid function there. So this is a population survey out of which only 80% have thyroid function that are normal. That means about 20% have normal thyroid function there. Okay? And that could be any of the following. It could be hypothyroidism, which is about, uh, about 4%, uh, hyperthyroidism, which could be about uh, you know, 1.5%, then what we call a subclinical hypothyroidism and subclinical hypothyroidism. We'll come to that when we discuss later. So, hypo and hypothyroidism, subclinical hypo and hypo. And then abnormal thyroid functions which you can't look at any of these, you know, clinic abnormalities in uh, So, then there are the abnormal thyroid function when I put the last one. That is just abnormal values. They don't necessarily mean uh, they have a major thyroid problem. <laughs> if you look at it, only nearly 20 percent have abnormal thyroid function test is due to legitimate reason or not legitimate reason. So it's a very common problem. Twenty percent of the population has it. And what is also interesting uh, is the fact that previously we have thought that it was all due to iron deficiency. So iron deficiency from raw inter and that of the thyroid problem. But what is interesting is even in an iron sufficient population you know, adults who have got sufficient iron content in their body, even they have quite a high proportion of iron So it's not just a cause of iron deficiency. Because this question gets asked by patients quite often. You know, or is it because I'm not eating enough iron, should I take more iron containing food? And the truth is, the large proportion of population and in care like this are very really iron sufficient, they have got enough iron in their and uh, they don't, I mean, they, they, they don't have attention to but they have thyroid problems. So clearly there are other reasons as well. So the question we need to ask ourselves is, why do we use the thyroid function that's so commonly? Uh, it is, as you know, every, you know, most, uh, even the smallest of uh, towns have a few labs which can do thyroid function tests within a, within a few hours. And it is quite good because we have got a convenience and we can do it. And the reason for doing so many tests are because I have dysfunctions are common. I have said in the previous few sites, thyroid dysfunctions are common. But also, when you have people who have got non specific symptoms, uh, so if there is no explanation. So people uh, have symptoms, weight, pain, age, you know, uh, 
entire uh, brain gain, which could be utilized in but uh, they get not the symptoms.